Okay, so we're going to replace the front uh, brake rotors on a Vanagon. I pulled the wheels off. Uh, most Vanagons don't have this. The reason uh, what this thing is, that's just a wheel spacer for my uh, uh, fancy wheels. I'm just going to move the camera over here a second and you can see, there you go. So I got some old, uh, or some old uh, Mercedes-Benz wheels there, so I needed to put a spacer on. So that's all that's for. So here we have a, our spacer. So we're going to take that off. But what's important, um, no one really shows how to repack the wheel bearings, so we're going to show how to repack the wheel bearings. So first of all, I loosen this. All this is is just a dust cap. So we pull this off, but if you notice in here, there's a little um, square hole uh, right there, and that's for your speedometer cable. So make sure that uh, when you line it back up, it gets lined up uh, the right way. Now, if we're looking a little closer here, we can see there's our center nut. There's our speedometer cable. We're gonna have our bearings in there. Uh, but obviously, uh, to get the rotor off, we're gonna to have to take the caliper off. So now that this is off here, I can just take off our little spacer. That comes off like so. And now we're gonna take off the caliper. So the caliper has uh, two bolts. Uh, they're 14 mil bolts, and I'll show you those. Okay, so now we're gonna take off the caliper. Uh, like I said, sometimes they're 14 mil bolts, sometimes they're 13. Depends if you've had a rebuilt caliper, you might have a new bracket in there. Uh, so that could be uh, that could be a thing. So it just really uh, it just really depends. So what we're gonna do is this: these ones on this side are actually 13. There you go. There's one out. And there's a second. Those are actually a little bit on the tight side. They shouldn't, uh, they shouldn't be that tight, uh, just FYI. So now we can remove the caliper, just like so. There's our caliper. Now we're gonna put new rotors, so we need to have a little more space because the new rotors are gonna be uh, thicker because these, uh, these ones that are on here are thin right now. So I'm just gonna take a little tool. And what this is gonna do is this tool here is just gonna spread, uh, it's just gonna spread the pads a bit. So you just put it in here and we're just gonna crank it. It's just gonna spread the pads out uh, just a wee bit. And that's enough to push them back. We don't have to push them back too much. Just like that. Now what we're gonna do, we're just gonna hang the caliper. There, we can hang it something up in here, around this bolt, because uh, we don't want it hanging from uh, the brake hose. So we're just gonna hang our caliper just like that. There we go, perfect. And take our pads out. Oops. They're actually in uh, they're really good shape, these ones. You can see they're quite thick, so pads are in really good shape. So we're gonna reuse them. Nothing wrong with reusing good pads. If they're in good shape, why not? And now we gotta get to take out these two big bolts uh, right here. Those are uh, 22 millimeter bolts. So 22 millimeter bolts, we're gonna put our, our wrench on there, just like so, just like that. And we are going to uh, loosen up these ones uh, right here. I need to... Okay, so I've broken the bolts uh, free with a 22 mil. Now I can just undo them with the socket. like that now we're gonna clean this up now for those of you that uh, th these ones here they have um, uh, floating pins in them I did do one video just specific on how to totally clean up a caliper uh, with its pins and how to do that so I'm not gonna go into that on this video I'll provide the link for you uh, click on that if you want to know how to clean them up uh, they're all the same Okay, so we have the caliper bracket off, so here we just have uh, the rotor here with the bearings. 
This nut here, just uh, FYI, it's a 27 uh, millimeter. So what some guys do is they take a screwdriver, they poke here, they undo this. I'm gonna re um, use a brand new nut. So you know what, if we twist it off, it's not gonna damage any threads because when you see that the threads um, uh, for the first part are very uh, uh, shallow anyway, so it doesn't matter. So we can just loosen it off. Uh, here's our 27 mil socket, like I said. Uh, we can just, just like this. If, you, if you're using a new bolt, it's fine. If you want to uh, reuse the nut, then I guess you take a little bit more care. Uh, the problem is uh, these nuts really should not be reused uh, because they don't use a cotter pin like some. They actually are just uh, staked in. And you can see here, uh, maybe it's been used once or twice already. It's been staked there. So we have the nut off. So that's fine, and actually if I fill here with the threads, I can feel there's where the threads sort of start, and then here it's sort of smooth. So this way the stake nut, you can just turn it off like that and it saves you a whole bunch of time, a uh, whole bunch of time. So now all we're gonna do to pull it off, we have, there we go, our little washer here, it's keyed. So I'm gonna just wipe the grease off so you can see it. So there you go, there's a washer, uh, it's keyed. And what that's gonna do is that this, uh, this keyed part here is gonna just go into there when we put it back together. So that's fine. So we can leave that there. And then now what we're gonna do is we just, we don't want the bearing to fall on the floor, it's gonna get dirt and everything. So we're just gonna put our fingers here and we're just gonna pull the whole thing off. There we go, just like that. And it's all off. Now we're gonna take it to the bench and then I'm gonna show you guys uh, how to repack wheel bearings. Okay, so we have the wheel bearing uh, on the bench here. Gonna take care of it, so that's nice. Now, some guys, they wash these right out uh, with Varsol or something like that. You really shouldn't because it, uh, the grease has trouble sticking to it after you do something like that. Uh, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the bearing out. It's right here, you can see. Just pulls out, it's tapered bearing. We're gonna give it a little wipe off. Actually, we can use some of these paper towels. Maybe uh, it'll show up a little bit better for the camera. So what we're doing is we're just gonna wipe it down. And I'm gonna show you. So give it a little wipe up. And then we're gonna inspect the race. So I don't know if you can, I don't know how, there we go. So what we're doing is we're looking to make sure there's no pitting anywhere in the race. After it's wiped off and you can see there's no pitting. So this one's okay. So how are we gonna repack it then? Well, we got a special little tool for that. We got this, this baby. What this is, is it's a bearing, uh, it's a bearing repacker. So what you do is you take the top off, put the bearing in and you squish it. I'll show you how that works. But what we're gonna do first is let's get this, uh, let's get the rear bearing out as well. There you can see there's a grease seal right there. Easiest way to get the grease seal out. Old mechanic once showed me back in the day when I was still learning. You get it right in the groove, not to damage a seal. So you can push it in. I can get it right in the under there. This way you won't rip the seal. And then all you're gonna do is pop it. There we go. There's your grease seal undamaged. Now I'm gonna replace uh, it anyway, so it doesn't matter. I have a new one, so it doesn't matter. But uh, if you guys are in a jam, that's how you, you get it out. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the bearing out of the back. You can see there's a bearing. I'm gonna take our napkin here gonna wipe it off just like this now we go and there we go it's kind of a gucky job lots of grease so there we go and we're gonna do our little inspection and we can see there we go, it's looking good. 
no pitting anywhere. Bearing looks good. We didn't have any humming or anything like that. We're just replacing the rotors because they're pulsating. The brake pads still have lots of wear, but we might as well do a proper cleaning on everything. So there we go. So I'm just giving uh, the bearing another little bit of a wipe here. There we go. So that's all wiped up. Now we're gonna use a bearing packer. Okay, so as promised, here's our little bearing packer. Here's our uh, big bearing. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna, nice and uh, greasy, we're gonna take our new bearing, we're gonna put it in just like so. We're gonna push this in like so. And now when we push down, it's gonna force the grease up through. Um, you gotta push actually pretty hard. So what I usually do is I just put it on the floor and I step on it. So that's, uh, that's what I'll do, especially for the big bearing. So I just take this down uh, for a second. I'm just gonna step on it. Okay, so it's back up from the floor. I'm gonna show you how really closely. You can actually see it pushed the old grease out because the, the new grease is blue. And uh, you can actually kind of see the, the two colors, the blue and the, and the dark grease. So it's pushed the old dark grease out. So that's how we know it's fully packed. And then this way it saves cleaning because you just push the old grease out. So now we can take this off like so. Uh, that's the old grease, dirty grease. I'm gonna grab a napkin here. You need to have lots of napkins have, uh, handy when you're doing wheel bearings. So I can go like so. I'm gonna get the new rotor just so we can put uh, the bearing in the rotor. Okay, so I got the new rotor. Just so you know too, whenever you get a rotor, make sure it has a race in it. And you can see uh, this little band here, that's the race. That's what the bearing actually rides in. Uh, make sure it's got uh, the races in it. Uh, if you put a bearing in without a race, well, you should know right away there's a problem because it's gonna feel real funny uh, when it's going in. Actually, I got some grease there on the rotor. So we'll just give it a little wipe off and we'll give it a little brake clean once we're done anyway. So it'll be nice and, uh, nice and clean. So we're gonna put uh, we're gonna put this bearing in, but before we do that, we want to make sure we put some uh, grease in the hub because, as you can see, there's nothing there. So I'm just gonna put my finger here. I've got a bunch of grease, and we're just gonna grease it up. Uh, make sure we got a fair amount of grease in there. Don't worry about putting too much because uh, if you put too much, it's just you'll see once we put the brake rotor back on, it's just going to push it out anyway, and then we can just wipe it off. So don't worry about uh, don't worry about that. I'd rather have a little bit too much than not enough. You don't want it running dry. So you can see there we got quite a bit of grease in there, so that's nice. Grease it up just like this, perfect. So now what we're going to do is we're going to take our bearing, just like this. We're gonna drop our bearing in. The bearing is in. Gonna give it a wipe. And then uh, what we're gonna do is we gotta put our new seal in. So there we go, give it a little wipe off. There we go. So we got our new handy dandy seal. Now, whenever you're gonna drive a seal in, any type of seal, you'll notice um, this seal prevents uh, the grease from coming out because it's gonna go like this and then it slides onto the hub. So it's got a rotating shaft like this, rotating on the inside of it. So it has a little spring, if you can see here, I'm showing you there, a little spring right there. Now what happens is, and this is the same on uh, rear-wheel drive cars when you're doing uh, axles or anything like that. If you pound on the seal, once you put it in, sometimes the spring, spring can pop out. If the spring pops out, it'll leak because then it has no tension. So what you do is you just grease the back of it. So you just fill it up. I'll show you a better picture of it in a second after I'm done putting some grease on the back. Just like so. There you go, now it's greased up just like that, you can see. So now the, the spring won't pop out. So that's the whole reason for, uh, for doing that. And then now we're just gonna tap it in. 
And now we're just gonna drive the seal in. You can see we put our grease there. I actually have the nice uh, seal driver here. So it just goes like this. And then we're just going to, uh, just going to tap it in. Okay, so we have our seal in. So we're just gonna give it a, a wipe. Make sure it's nice and clean. Just like that. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is we gotta grease the front bearing. If you remember, we inspected uh, the front bearing and it was fine, but now it's, uh, it's dry. So instead of like a, waiting just a whole bunch of time, uh, cleaning it out, we just put it in our, our machine, a little handy dandy machine. And I wonder if actually, as we move it over, this is smaller bearings, so it's not as hard to push, but if I push, I don't know, yeah, you probably won't gonna be able to see it. So I'm just gonna put it on the floor, step on it, and we'll force some grease through. Okay, so I just stepped on it a bit there. There's, uh, there's the machine. So if we take this out, we're gonna clean up the machine a bit, and we pull out our bearing. We can actually see, there's where it's greased up now, and you can see the dark grease on top, and that's the old grease out. So we're just gonna give that a wipe off. Uh, take the old grease away because we don't really want the old grease anyway So we can throw that back like there just so once again, I can grab paper towel wipe my hands and Then we're going to carry this over to the car or the van I should say a vanagon and we are going to install it Okay, so now we're just going to take our front bearing out like here. We're going to drop it in So we are golden just like that and then we're going to go over to the vehicle and put it back together. Okay, so now we're going to put the rotor uh, back on. So we're just going to give it a little clean here. Wipe off all the excess grease. Uh, you can see there's... Uh, this is the old grease. Just going to give it a good wipe. Make sure it's clean. We just want to take the old dirty grease off, really. Some of it actually still looks pretty clean, as you could see there in that first shot there. It was kind of pink looking. It was still for, still not, not fresh, but it was, uh, it was clean. And you want to clean right here, because this is where the seal rides. So we just want to make sure it's nice and clean there. And there we go. We're clean enough, that's good. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna put our, uh, our rotor on. So we have our new rotor with our seal. We have our front bearing in there. So we're gonna line it all up. Just like this. There we go, and it is on. So that's good. Now what we're gonna do is we're going to put on our washer. There we go. And we need a new bolt because the old one was no good. So there's our, our old one. Old one was, uh, you can tell it's been uh, uh, really marked up. So I'm just gonna go over to the bench and get a new one. Okay, so we got the rotor back on and now we're just gonna open up our uh, package here. And what this is, is a new nut. You saw the other one was uh, all marred up and staked a number of times. So we got a nice new one. So that's pretty good. Pretty happy about that. We just make sure our rotor's pushed in all the way. And then make sure, there we go. And then we don't want to cross thread our new nut. We want to make sure it's perfect. It goes on the right way, just like so. And there we go. Now what we're gonna do is we have to uh, preload the bearing. So we have to tighten it up first and then back it off. Uh, the manual for the VW, what it says is just tighten it up pretty tight, but don't lock anything up and then just back it off 
and you should actually be able to move the little washer with your finger. Now, most vehicles, I'll tell you, you can just, uh, the final is, is, is around one foot pound of torque af after it's been preloaded. So we're gonna preload it uh, first, and it's a 27 mil, so I can just use my socket and turn it down. Now all we're gonna do, because it's on, is we gotta stake it. So we know we're vertical right there. We stake it into there, and there's also one horizontal. So all we really need is one. Some guys will stake a, a ton of them, but you really don't have to. Just like that. You can see if it's like that, uh, it's not gonna move anywhere. Um, if you want, you can just make sure you get right into the groove. There you go. And that nut is not going to move, uh, not going to be able to move anywhere. So that's it. If you want, we can, uh, we can be lucky here and do one on the side too for good luck. But it's not really necessary. You don't have to. I did it on the other side. So it's not going to move once it's staked into place like that. So that's it. Make sure it's clean. So now we're going to put my wheel spacer on. There we go. And then now we're going to line this back up. Line up the square or we won't have a speedometer working properly. So here's our brake bracket. Actually, what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you a better view of this. Okay, so this is our brake bracket going on. So there's our bolts. Just like okay, so now I'm going to just drop the pads back in. We're just reusing the pads. They were still good. So we're just going to drop them in. They fit in there. Nice. Nice. We're gonna put our caliper back. There we go. Our two bolts. One at the bottom here. Don't wanna cross anything, cross thread anything, so make sure we take our time. Okay, so we're just gonna tighten them up by hand. And as you can, I don't know if you can see or not, but we can't get any tighter than this because this upper uh, part here is actually spinning. You can see maybe at the bottom if it spins. What I'm talking about is this piece in here. And if that's the case, you just need to get a, a thin wrench just to hold it. You can actually see it turning like that. You don't want that because you won't be able to torque it down properly. So what you want to do is you want to get a thin wrench in there. And these are, uh, are they 14 or what size are they? Nope, they're actually a little bit bigger. Maybe a 15, nope. I'll have to go get a bigger wrench. Okay, these ones, these pins here are actually 17, uh, just to hold them. So, get my 17 super thin wrench in there, and then I can tighten them up. There we go. And then, and voila. We are all done. And that's how you uh, repack wheel bearings and uh, change front rotors on a VW Bannerman.